Hello, this is Andrew. Welcome to Collaborative Learning. Today's book is Bureaucracy by James Wilson. If you like my work, please give it a like, subscribe to this channel, check the playlists, and support me on Patreon and PayPal. The links to Patreon and PayPal are included in the description to this video. First, I'll describe the contents of the book, talk about what's interesting about it, then I'll move on to what you can get out of this book. James Q. Wilson was one of the leading political scientists and authority on public administration in the United States. Wilson spent much of his time as a Harvard and UCLA professor. He also published many books on economics and politics during his lengthy career. In 2003, Wilson received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian award. His book, Bureaucracy, is taught in universities and is a classic book on the way American government agencies work and how they can be made to work better. A wide range of bureaucracies, including the U.S. Army, the FBI, the CIA, the FCC, and the Social Security Administration are examined. The book provides a comprehensive, in-depth analysis of what government agencies do, why they operate the way they do, and how they may become more accountable and effective. It is a guide to understanding how American government works. The student, after reading this book, emerges with a better understanding of bureaucratic behavior. Besides being a very detailed description of how bureaucracy works, the book focuses on why they will always have problems, no matter the circumstances, due to the natural structure of these institutions. Also, it gives a quite clear understanding of the differences between government bureaucracies and the private sector. We learned that the impetus to create increasingly large and complicated bureaucracies as originating from the need to coordinate trust groups beyond a small, tightly woven team of people. So when you have dozens, hundreds, or thousands of people working together, society needs bureaucracies for coordination of this hierarchy and pyramid of trust relationships. In these relationships, you have the familiar thing. You need employees, managers, and above them executives to coordinate activity. The book includes many examples and case studies such as the DMV, the Army, public schools, prisons, the State Department, and the Forest Service, and many others. The examples are always apt and demonstrate the points being made. The book includes hundreds of footnotes pointing to studies cited and further resources. A lot of research and scholarship has been devoted to learning about public administration. The book is organized into six parts. Organizations, operators, managers, executives, context, and change. In the first part, organizations, Wilson's thesis is simply that organization matters. Organization must be in accord with the objectives of the agency. In the second part, operators, the author examines the bureaucratic behavior and how bureaucratic culture is shaped by the needs of the situation they encounter on a daily basis. In the third part, managers, Wilson deeds, deals with issues unique to managers and public agencies. In this part, attention is focused upon the constraints that create boundaries for managers. The fourth part is devoted to executives. This part illustrates why the executives of government agencies compete with each with other departments. It discusses which strategies are used in the process of competition or cooperation. In the fifth part, Wilson focuses on the environment in which public agencies do their business, such as Congress, the presidency, and the courts. In the final part, Wilson summarizes the problems of bureaucracy and examines alternative solutions. Since Wilson is a conservative, he advises market-like solutions to public institutional problems. The book concludes with a more reasonable pro propositions for effective solutions. There are many insightful things to be learned that challenge our popular impressions of bureaucracies. For instance, public institutions are known to be slow to act and burdened by a lot of rules and paperwork. It's popularly called red tape. Red tape has to do with a currency called trust by constituents and those being served. The main reason behind the existence of red tape is that in public organizations, there's a tendency to multiply the rules as scandals occur. 
This is aimed at preventing future scandals and violations. They seek to prevent the loss of trust by constituents in the bureaucracy's mission. So it's a matter of institutional survival. Another major point is that measuring efficiency is a difficult project in the public sector due to how different public institutions are from private ones like businesses. Public managers have a strong incentive to worry a lot more about constraints than successfully achieving tasks, which means to worry more about the processes rather than the outcomes. Work that produces measurable outcomes tends to drive out work that produces unmeasurable outcomes. But not all work is actually productive to achieving the most important goals and is harder to hold managers accountable for results. Instead, it is easier to hold them accountable for conforming to the rules. Due to the profit motive, it is more clear in for-profit businesses as to which activities are worth doing and which activities are a waste of money. So this disconnect from financial profit leads to a saying that in Washington, you can be ex- successful if you appear to be successful. Appearance is just as important as reality. This can be managed by public in- executives by their dealings with their principal source of power, their constituents. For executives, much of the time must be spent attending to the demands and needs of these outside groups. Since satisfying groups is the goal, innovation is not inevitably good. Absent a market that would impose a fitness test on any organizational change, a changed public bureaucracy can persist in doing the wrong thing for years if they are doing what their constituents want. The result is that agencies end up being constrained by carefully defined rules, which leads to excessive complexity and a waste of resources. There's a strong tendency to avoid responsibility by working to minimize criticism, thus preserving agency power. Government agencies lack the profit maximization incentive, which causes them to forego the cost efficiencies, innovation, and competitiveness that result from being in the markets. As a consequence, they tend to not move people and equipment to where it's most needed. The tension between task and mission, between goals and incentives and rewards and constraints is thus unavoidable, and red tape is the result. Managers spend a great deal of time managing the constraints as opposed to managing the agency. The number of constraints in the government are more substantial and play a larger role in the working lives of employees, managers, and executives. I am a person who finds organizations to be fascinating whether they are public or in the private sector, business, nonprofit, or military. In this book, Bureaucracy, it's something I just stumbled upon while learning about management from Peter Drucker and other business school scholars. I had read The Practice of Management and other managerial classics, but I felt that they were missing something, and also that I was missing something. What I was missing was a fundamental education about organizational dynamics. This is actually a field of study that is not too well known. Since everyone deals with the government in some way, I think that basic knowledge about bureaucracy is very important. Anyone who wants to understand the differences between public and private sector actions and goals should read this book. It is rich in meaningful examples throughout the text. But thankfully, I think that a lot of insights of individual and group leadership and management behavior also transfer to the for-profit and non-profit sector. A flaw of this book is that it was published in 1989, which means that a lot of the examples used were outdated and predate the modern information age. So readers should exercise caution when studying these old examples. The other flaw is that the book does not focus enough on the main things government agencies can actually do better than private industry. The free markets do not always provide the best and most efficient outcomes. But thankfully, these two flaws of the book don't detract much from the main teachings of the research. Ultimately, this book is interesting as it's about people, motivation, motivations, success and failure. It's about organizations dealing with war, education, poverty, justice, and other topics of social interest. It's a stunning piece of institutional analysis. I highly recommend this book as a general education. In particular, those trying to understand executive and managerial behavior. 
as well as civil servants who work in the government, who are wondering why their agencies act the way they do. I rate bureaucracy a 4.5 out of 5. So that's why I think about bureaucracy. Please put your thoughts and ideas in the comment section. They always make a great conversation. I hope you find my re review to be formative. Thanks for watching.